Hello, and welcome to our webinar on replacing the functionality of egg. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you find this webinar useful. I'm Martha, and I work in the marketing department at Auric and Short. I'm going to host you throughout the, uh, this webinar today. With me, I'm joined by two of our technical field support team members, Ellie Gashgill and Alex Batty. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be looking at why manufacturers are looking to replace egg in applications, along with the functional properties that egg provides in bakery and sourcer applications and some practical solutions to overcoming this challenge. If you've watched our webinars before, you'll know that we like to keep these as interactive as possible. So we will be launching a poll partway through and there will also be some QR codes in the um, bottom corner of your screens and you can scan these and it will take you to some recipe sheets and application guides. You'll all be receiving a recording of this webinar on Monday morning and this will have all of those downloadable resources attached to it. So don't worry if you miss anything as we go through today. Feel free to pop any questions in the Q&A box on Zoom. We don't have time to answer these live in the webinar, but we will get in contact with you shortly afterwards to help with your query. Alternatively, if you're an existing customer, feel free to get in contact with your account manager and they will be able to help you. Or there will also be some contact details for both Ellie and Alex at the end of the webinar, so you can get in contact directly with either of them if you wish to. So let's delve into the reasons why egg replacement is such a hot topic right now. So the first reason is due to a massive increase in egg prices. And we're seeing this in both wholesale and retail outlets. And we've actually seen some suppliers putting limits on the number of eggs that we're able to buy. A perfect sum of events have happened to cause this spike in egg prices. And one of the main factors is due to the avian flu which has massively disrupted the supply of eggs. So going back to October 2021, this is when we saw the first of many confirmed cases and outbreaks. And it actually led to changes in rules and regulations, including keeping all birds indoors. The avian flu has led to over 50 million birds being called, and we're still seeing some confirmed cases and outbreaks even today and Great Britain are still under the avian influenza prevention zone regulations. So this has led to a massive decrease in the number of eggs that are available. The second factor that's impacted egg prices is um, chicken feed prices. And this is because chicken feed has become in short supply due to various reasons, but one of the main reasons is due to the situation in Ukraine. So chickens are largely fed on corn and Ukraine is responsible for 16% of global maize production. And this has had a knock on effect for the production of eggs. My colleague Rob did actually host a webinar last year all around the maize and wheat crisis. So if this is something that's affecting you, then get in contact with us and we can send you over the details of that webinar. The third factor that's affecting egg prices is inflation. Inflation has unfortunately increased across the board and in food alone, we've seen it rise to over 17% in the UK. But we've also seen increases in energy and fuel costs, which have made both production and transportation exceptionally expensive. So the result of these three factors has seen an eye-watering increase in the prices of eggs. On the flip side to cost, we're seeing pressure from consumers to replace egg in applications as more and more are switching to a plant-based diet. So they're wanting to see more plant-based alternatives on our supermarket shelves. 30% of consumers now say that they are substituting eggs and one in four want to see more egg alternatives in our supermarket. But we're seeing demand in other categories as well. For example, um, chocolate and baked, good, uh, baked goods category, 22% of consumers want to see plant-based alternatives in this category. So we're looking to substitute eggs cross category, not just whole egg alternatives. We have seen manufacturers begin to take on this challenge and we've seen an 11% increase in products launched across Europe with a plant-based or vegan claim on them from 2021 to 2022. So 
So eggs are used as a functional ingredient in products, which is why it's such a challenge to replace them. They provide different properties such as aeration, uh, emulsification, they provide color and shine to products. And this is because of the different proteins that they contain. And Ellie and Alex are gonna to touch on these very shortly. So eggs are used across a wide range of categories. And this graph here shows just how widely eggs are used in applications. This is showing the last decade of retail food launches across Europe that have used egg as an ingredient. Here you can see that bakery is the most affected sector. Uh, over 40% of bakery products have used egg as an ingredient. But we are seeing categories such as ready meals, desserts and sauces actually really significantly impacted by these in, uh, price increases as well. Um, so I'm sure you're all thinking, how is it possible to overcome such a significant challenge when replacing eggs? So all of the solutions that you're going to see today have been designed and developed to replace the specific functionality that egg provides in, in the application. There's no one size fits all answer. And we work really closely with you to really understand the function uh, that egg is providing to then come up with viable solutions. All of our solutions are clean label, which means that we've enhanced the natural functionality of crops using physical processing methods. And this allows us to use consumer friendly back of pack declarations. We have a technical field support team who are based across Europe and they are on hand to help at any stage of the development process from kitchen concepts to scaling up to factory trials all the way through to launch to ensure that you are given the best solution possible. So I'm now going to pass you over to Ellie, who is a part of that technical field support team. And Ellie's going to discuss um, the functional properties that Egg provides in bakery applications and how to overcome the challenge in this category. Thanks, Martha. And good afternoon, everyone. Well, Martha set the scene as to why you might need to replace eggs in certain applications. So in this next section, we'll have a look at why eggs do what they do and talk about ways that you might go about replacing them specifically in bakery applications without compromising on product quality. So Martha's outlined in a little bit of detail that eggs play a number of functional roles in bakery applications as they make structural and organoleptic changes due to the different components that they contain. So the first application area that we're going to look at is aeration. Um, eggs, as I'm sure you're aware, are particularly good at aerating and they create these bubbles that give a light and fluffy texture to products. Meringues are a really good example um, of using eggs for their aerating function. So when we aerate a product, we're introducing a gas such as air, and this is usually going into a liquid or viscous solution. So for example, if you think about a pancake batter, both whole eggs and egg whites alone are both really functional and they almost work like leavening agents because they trap air into dough and batter, batter systems. And as the air becomes trapped uh, within the system, you form a, a stable foam. So as this product is baked and the heat starts to penetrate the product, the air bubbles that have been captured within that structure will start to expand and this creates an increase in the overall volume and you get a lighter texture, which I'm guessing is a win-win, right? So if we have a look at how this actually happens, before we start to whip, the proteins that are present in raw egg white are really, really tightly bound together. And in order to create this stable foam that we're looking for, we need to unravel and start to denature those proteins. And we approve this, uh, we achieve this through the process of whipping. So as you're creating friction, you're tearing and denaturing the protein, which in turn allows for air incorporation to occur. So in your third stage, your unfolded proteins start to move through the liquid and they actually start to settle on the surface of the bubbles that have already been formed. So neighboring proteins start to take their, their place and start to form covalent bonds with the adjacent proteins. So what you're actually doing here is creating a film network around the air bubbles, and this is what traps the air in place. 
So the stronger the protein network that you've created, the less likely your air bubbles are to collapse and the more it is possible to, in, to further incorporate air bubbles into your mixture. So by continuing to whip, you actually mesh the proteins together, which results in that firm texture that you're looking for. So like your little egg white peaks. When you start to bake, and as, as we've mentioned before, and the, the heat's penetrating um, the baked product, your air bubbles are expanding and you're getting this higher overall volume and your lighter texture. So the more you heat your eggs, the more the egg proteins actually start to aggregate and you get that tight and firm product because your protein network is becoming more, more firm and more rigid. Eggs also contribute color to baked goods like cakes and muffins. So they're both contributing by browning the product on the exterior through glazing, and also with the addition of color to the in interior structure. And these things in combination contribute to a perception of higher quality from the consumer's side. Egg yolks are also adding color and sheen to baked goods as they contain a number of yellow and orange pigments. One of these pigments, a product called xanthophyll, contributes a shine and gloss to products like pies and savory bakes. And again, this is all related to the, the customer perception of, of higher quality. Egg proteins also play a functional role in the Maillard reaction as the amino acids that are present in eggs react with the reducing sugars as they're heating. So you've also got this non-enzymatic browning that doesn't just contribute to color, but also to the taste and aroma uh, within the baked product. So yeah, you can imagine like eggs are doing loads of different things in, in bakery applications in terms of structure and color. So they're very highly functional. So if we imagine what would happen if we took eggs out of that application, it's very likely to have a significant impact in terms of loss of volume or lack of structure or an overall dullness in color. But as Martha's already mentioned, we develop ingredients specifically to replace certain aspects of the ingredient that we're, we're looking to take out, in this case, egg. So in the next section, we're going to have a look at a couple of different product ranges where we've developed ingredients specifically to replicate the functionality of egg. These are our Overprox range and our Easy Glaze range. Overprox is more for general egg replacement, where Easy Glaze is typically focused on glazing. So if we start by looking at a, the Overprox range, we're going to look at a specific ingredient here, a product called Overprox 14. As Martha also touched on, we're continuously looking at uh, new ways of replicating specific functionalities. And to that end, we're continuously developing new ingredients. Overprox 14 is the newest addition to our Overprox range. And what we're doing here is replicating the functionality that you would normally expect from egg white in terms of aeration, foaming, and giving you that stability. Overprox 14 declares as wheat protein and pea protein on back of pack. It's supplied in powder form and it can be combined with water to achieve different functionalities. So as you can see from this little video here, if you simply disperse Overprox 14 in water, and you whip it with a whisk or a, a, a Kenwood mixer in the kitchen, what you'll start to create is these soft white peaks, similar to those that you would get with, with whipping egg white. With the addition of sugar into this, uh, into this um, aerated mixture, what you can effectively create is a plant-based meringue. So baked in the same way as a traditional meringue, you would end up with a product that is crispy on the outside, slightly soft and gooey on the, out, on the inside, so very much uh, the structure that you would expect from a conventional meringue. We can also use that, um, that foam, that same principle in other baked applications, um, such as a muffin. So what you can do is create that soft sort of egg white style peak and then fold that through a cake batter or um, a mixture to create something like a muffin or, or a tray bake cake. That same foam can also be folded through desserts like mousses and souffles to give you that lightness, that volume, and that in aerated internal structure that you would associate with using egg white in application. 
There are other ingredients within the Overprox range, but we've just got a few examples here on screen just to demonstrate a couple of different, different points. So the first of the products that you've got here on screen is a product called Overprox 18. Overprox 18 declares as wheat protein and can be used for total egg replacement in applications like cakes and tray bakes and cupcakes. Overprox 5 looks like it's doing exactly the same job as Overprox 18 in terms of providing a total egg replacement solution for baked goods. But you'll notice that the declaration is tapioca starch and fava bean protein, and therefore it's a gluten-free alternative to Overprox 18. The final example we have on the screen is a product called Overprox W, which declares as wheat flour and is actually designed for partial egg replacement. So it can be used to replace up to 50% of the egg in baked applications like cakes and brownies. We understand that it's important to look at the recipe and basically select products that work synergistically with the existing ingredients within the application, gluten-free options being one, of, one example of, of how we might go about doing this. So the second area we're going to look at, and an area where eggs are commonly, commonly used, is, is glazing. Egg washers are quite often used for glazing sweet and savoury baker, bakery applications and give you that lovely golden shine on the top of something like a pie uh, or a pastry product. There are a number of, uh, of advantages to considering a product like Easy Glaze in comparison to an egg wash. Firstly, Easy Glaze is supplied in powder form, and therefore there's an environmental benefit to not shipping large quantities of water around. The other benefits are looking at things like shelf life. If you've got liquid egg um, in your storage, that's potentially going to have a relatively short shelf life. Whereas with Easy Glaze, you can actually make it up to the quantities that are going to be used and store the rest in, in, in powder form. Finally, if, if the application or indeed the factory doesn't contain egg, Swapping away from egg to a product like Easy Glaze can actually remove an allergen from either the application or from the whole factory. So within the Easy Glaze range, we have products that declare as maize or tapioca starch and products that declare as wheat protein. And depending on the specific product, you'll achieve a golden color, a high shine finish, and that sticky tacky feel that you would want on some baked goods. So the first product we're going to look at in detail is Easy Glaze, and this declares as maize starch, which gives you a high shine finish with a tacky feel. So think about the kind of finish that you'd want on something like a hot cross bun. So that kind of sticky tacky finish that you'd associate with that kind of product. Easy Glaze can be applied both pre or post bake as long as the product is still hot. So if we have a look at the other ingredients within the range, we have Easy Glaze, which we've just touched on. We have Easy Glaze C and Easy Glaze AG, both of which declare as wheat protein and would be used to give you that shine on the tops of sweet and savoury pastry applications like croissants or pies, for example, and can also be used to um, improve adhesion of additions on bread. So, for example, helping seeds stay on within packaging. The key difference between Easy Glaze C and Easy Glaze AG is the dispersion method. Easy Glaze C requires the use of high shear mixing equipment to disperse, whereas Easy Glaze AG is designed for easier dispersion. So if a high shear mixer isn't already being used in the factory, it can be used with much, much simpler types of mixing equipment. The final product that we have within the range is a product called Super Glaze, which declares as tapioca starch. And once again, this can be used to glaze pastry, breads and cakes. And again, as you can see within this range, there are products that appear to be doing very similar jobs, but we would select the correct product depending on the application method and also which application it's going to be used on, whether it sits nicely on the back of pack declaration along with ex existing ingredients. So that completes our whistle stop tour of egg replacement in bakery. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Alex, who's going to take you through the next section of the webinar. Thanks, Ellie. So let's have a look at the different function of eggs in sauces. So eggs have many different functions. Like Ellie has just discussed some of the functions in bakery, 
eggs also play an important role in thickening sauces and acting as an emulsifier in products like mayonnaise. So in this upcoming session, I'm going to talk you through the function of eggs and emulsification and thickening and solutions we have to replace egg. So eggs play a big role when it comes to emulsifying and helping create an emulsion. So let's begin by actually looking at what an emulsion is. So when you have oil and water together, you will find that the oil will naturally gather into large drops. So oil and water are immiscible liquids and do not naturally mix together. So an emulsion is a mixture of these two immiscible liquids, and you can get two types of emulsion. A water and oil emulsion, where water droplets are dispersed in an oil phase, for example, butter, or an oil in water emulsion, where oil droplets are dispersed in a water phase, like mayonnaise and ice cream. Emulsions are formed through the process of emulsification and usually by vigorous mixing of the two liquids. So an egg is an emulsifier and emulsifiers like eggs are substances which help bind the two liquids. The egg yolk within the egg contains a protein called lecithin, and this has a hydrophilic head which loves water and a hydrophobic tail which loves oil and these molecules are known as amphiphilic. In an emulsion, the water-loving head, so the hydrophilic head, binds to the water phase, and the oil-loving tail, the hydrophobic end, binds with the oil phase. So this means that the lecithin in the egg yolk can bind water and oil together as a mixture, as it holds them both, making a strong and stable bond. When creating an emulsion, you usually need to vigorously mix the two liquids to break the oil into smaller droplets. It's also important when creating an emulsion that the oil droplets are added slowly to the water so that the lecithin can thoroughly coat the small droplets of oil. To ensure a mixture stays mixed, the lecithin within the egg yolk allows for tiny droplets of oil to stay suspended throughout emulsions as they are coated with a thin film of egg yolk which avoids the droplets from coalescing or joining back together. When an emulsion is formed, the emulsion tends to be more viscous than the two liquids which make it. And without an emulsifier like eggs, foods like some sauces would not have stability, shelf life, or even the rich creamy mouthfeel they tend to have. So let's now look at how eggs contribute to the thickening of sauces. So coagulation happens in the process of thickening with egg. It's the change in structure of the protein, usually from a liquid to a solid or a thicker liquid brought around by heat. Proteins in egg, both the white and the yolk, change from liquid to solid, so coagulate when being heated. There are lots of long, tightly coiled protein molecules which float around in the egg yolk and in the egg white. These proteins look a lot like nested noodles and all the proteins within the egg have different properties and react differently at different temperatures, for example their denaturing temperatures. When raw egg is beaten and heated, the heat gives the protein molecules energy, which results in the molecules vibrating, moving around quickly and bumping into each other. With this, the proteins begin to denature which causes them to unwind from their coils and begin to stick together, interlinking with one another. When the temperature reaches around 60 degrees Celsius, the protein molecules in the egg begin to entangle with each other, forming a mesh of proteins, which quickly forms a solid material. It's important to constantly stir the sauce when using eggs to thicken which forces the proteins to stretch out into a mesh as otherwise the proteins huddle together and set into lumps, which we may know as curdling. So a good example to imagine for this process is scrambled egg. So when we crack an egg into a pan, it's like a thick liquid. However, as it is beaten and cooked, it begins to thicken into a solid. So this process here is what happens in sauces when we use eggs to thicken. So in just egg, the egg turns to scrambled egg at around 60 degrees Celsius. However, molecules in ingredients like milk, cream and sugar, which are commonly used in sauces like custard, which are often thickened with eggs, 
So they obstruct the proteins in the egg, which increases the temperature of solidification from 60 to around 80 degrees Celsius. So as we've just seen, egg has some great functions and sources. So I'm now gonna speak you through some of the solutions we have developed to successfully replace egg in sources. Again, on the bottom right hand side of the screen, there'll be a QR code which you can scan to download any recipes. So firstly, let's have a look at the replacement of egg as an emulsifier in mayonnaise. Like we covered previously, egg acts as an emulsifier in mayonnaise. Through the process of emulsification, oil is dispersed into the water with vigorous mixing, usually using a hydrogen mixer. The use of egg is essential in stability, preventing splitting and sustaining the desired organoleptic properties. So a viscous product with a creamy mouthfeel and light appearance. It can be challenging to mimic the function of egg. To find a replacement for egg, the emulsifier must be able to deliver the same property as egg does. So we have successfully designed and developed technologies to specifically replicate the functionality of egg in mayonnaise. So during the, the development of alternatives, it was crucial to ensure product stability, creamy mouthfeel, neutral taste and light appearance all remain similar to that as egg, of egg as an emulsifier. Using products from our Overprox range, we have successfully been able to replace 100% egg in mayonnaise in lower oil mayonnaise and in high oil. These ingredients are declared as tapioca starch and pea protein, and they have been developed to mimic the functionality of egg as an emulsifier in mayonnaise so that you can get the same emulsion, stability, and organoleptic properties as egg, whilst being allergen free. So the next area, the next application area I'm going to talk you through is custard and egg replacement in custard. So custard is the base of many luxurious desserts or savoury applications like quiche. Egg plays an important role in thickening and creating that rich creamy mouthfeel. Again, this can be challenging to replace to ensure the same desirable properties you get from the function of egg. Again, we have successfully developed a custard solution without egg. This uses a combination of functional ingredients in which we have developed and supply here at Ulrich and Short. So the recipe example I'm going to talk you through is for a savoury custard for products like quiche, but could be adapted for sweet. So the first ingredient is one of our functional starches from our Synergy range. It's made up of tapioca starch, maize starch and pea starch. And with the combination of crops and their separate attributes, it's been developed to give viscosity and also gives a setback texture to the custard. Then using one of our functional proteins from our complex range, which in this instance is a faba bean protein. So we've used this product for its good emulsification properties. It also has a light color, so will not affect any of the visual attributes of the custard. And finally, we have utilized an ingredient from our fat replacement range, Delight. It's a tapioca starch. So the use of tapioca, because of its round spherical granule, adds indulgence by providing a creamy and smooth mouthfeel, just like egg provides in custard. So thank you for your time and I'll now pass you back to Martha. Thank you, Ellie and Alex, for providing us with those really practical solutions to replacing egg. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope that this webinar has been useful for you. As mentioned at the beginning, if you've got any questions, queries, or want any help in your development process, then feel free to get in contact with us, either using the contact details on the screen now, or you can pop any last questions into the Q&A box on Zoom. We will leave this webinar open for a few minutes just for any last questions to come through. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope that you all have a lovely weekend. <laughs>